Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 77 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, I did a major redesign of the Island of Swords, building up an entirely new downtown area and moving all of our high-rise buildings there. Today, the work on the island continues, but I'm also going to be figuring out a few logistical problems we have as we try to push our population just a little bit more. But first, I've got a lovely time-lapse here at the start of the video, developing our new tourism focused district. Let's begin. Alright ladies and gentlemen it is good to be back in Anno 1800 and good to be kicking things off with a brand new time lapse. It's actually a pretty ambitious one, a big overhaul to the kind of eastern part of the island but before I get into that a little bit more as this is going on in the background I just wanted to mention that I actually record these narrations of time lapses at the end of recording an episode normally. And just as this time lapse ends, you know, as I was starting the episode, as it were, I kind of go into my absence from YouTube, my absence from the series, and talk about stuff that's been happening a little bit, and just kind of address all that. So if you're kind of waiting for me to kind of catch you up on stuff, I'll do that right when this time lapse ends. I know it's a little bit out of order in some ways, but hopefully people don't mind. Speaking of people, if you could give this episode an extra big like, you know, smash that like button as the kids say, that would really, really help because a lot of people watch this series and they're not actually subscribed and I don't beat you over the head with click that subscribe button, hit the bell, etc. Although that would obviously be great. I just don't really mention that that often. I'm not a great marketing person. I'm not, you know, I just, I'm not good at promoting self-promotion too much. But this episode in particular, if you want to help the series, now's the time to give it a big like. Make sure you're subscribed if you can and also comment what you'd like to see from it in the future, and speculation, I guess, maybe on the future upcoming DLCs. Uh, the reason I mention that is because a lot of people aren't subscribed, and they might end up missing this episode, because it's been such a long gap since I previously uploaded. If there's a bit of extra engagement on it, then there's a higher chance it'll get recommended to them again in their YouTube feed. So, just wanted to get that out of the way. You know, obviously only do it if you like the episode. If you hate it, well, I don't know what to tell you. Alright, so... With the time lapse now, as you can see, we've been moving around some hotels and kind of figuring out things. I was sort of experimenting a little bit, left a little bit of the experimentation in there. And basically I was kind of deciding, was, was I going to go with more, even more hotels? And I was thinking of adding two brand new ones in there. And I was also thinking about putting them out on the coastline next to where the botanical garden is and where the old uh, uh, the aqu aquarium zoo is at the back of the palace. And I looked at it and I just it just wasn't really adding up. I could fit a couple of them there, but it wouldn't really look right. So I, did, I doubled down on this area and decided, yeah, I'm going to add in a couple more hotels out here. And the reason I wanted to add more hotels is because the area of influence that the Trifle Tower, or whatever it's called, <laughs> the Iron Schlong, can reach across the, you know, it can reach a lot further across the island. So I wanted to get an... Uh, and increase the amount of the customer base that we have, the tourists that come from the hotels. So more hotels, more customers means more influence for the Iron Schlong. Uh, so that's kind of the reason there. A lot's going on. I'm zooming around in the episode. I'm not really catching up to it. I'll slow down during the episode and actually take you for a walk around certain places in the city. So don't worry if it's a little bit hectic. But I just added down by the docks a kind of a nightlife strip where it's all neon lit. I'm using the Vibrant Cities DLC pack to now kind of change the color of some of the buildings and change the skins on them just to increase the variety. O over by the Scholars here, I've sort of changed it to a brick skins and that kind of matches the buildings in there just a little bit better. I've moved a lot of the drug stores and furniture stores over to the Central Park area to kind of cover more of the um, engineers and more of the Scholars because some of the items in there actually double up, which is really nice, which I'll talk about later in the episode too. And then I'm just kind of configuring the layout here. Again, this area is a bit more touristy focused. There's a lot of restaurants, there's the variety theater, uh, it's got the university, you know, it's, it's eclectic, it's young, it's hip, it's it's popping off. So we've got loads of different colors in the buildings, just because it's a little more artsy, I think. So I, I kind of thought that looks kind of cool there with the engineer buildings, and I was just creating this little market gap area as well, just to fit it into the roads a bit more nicely. Um... I'm just wondering when we're going to get over to the other side of things. But anyway, I can use this time to just talk about the fact that it, there's definitely room for even more engineers in this city. And I think it will, I'll endeavor to increase the population as I can as time goes on. Right, so yeah, something I didn't mention actually, you could probably just see it there really quickly, is that the zoo has been now moved over from where the artisans are. And you can see me pulling all those houses over to the side now. And I now have a dedicated zoo over on this big plateau. And then we're going to have a bunch of artisan houses out here along the cliff edges. 
uh, similar to how we have them up on the cliffs in the other part of the city, but these ones are going to look very different. Uh, we're going to apply that colorful skin to them. And my thinking with this was, the Vibrant Cities is a really cool pack, because you can kind of make these areas look a lot different to each other, even though they're basically the same. You know, they're both artisan cliff areas. But this one's kind of different because the colorful pack for the artisan houses, I think, look really, really... Obviously, colorful is the obvious word to use, but just, like, eccentric, you know, just different. It would be, like, a bit of a spectacle, I think, to kind of see that. I know some cities do have kind of more colored buildings and things, but um, I thought this kind of fits the tourism sector in a way, because it's like, oh, yeah, maybe people would, like, visit this place. Like, this place is known for having these, weird, like, really brightly colored buildings and stuff. You know, it's kind of like an attraction in and of itself. Uh, so that was kind of my idea here. So... I'm sort of placing ornaments in almost temporarily because I just realized that doing this um, about halfway through actually building out this area that there's been a DLC that I didn't even know about called the Seasonal Decorations Pack. So I realized that about halfway through. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to add in any ornaments. I'll buy the pack and then I'll have a look through those and we'll add them in maybe in a future episode or something. So I'm placing in a lot of temporary ornaments, just a lot of basic trees and things like that just to kind of like fill the gaps. Um, while I'm moving mostly mostly focused on moving the house and just getting the layout correct. There's no town hall over here There could be in future, but I'm actually thinking of building that town hall between the hotels So the final count for hotels I'm not sure on total on the island, but I have added one more over what we had I was thinking of adding two, but I've just settled on one uh, for the moment So I really like the look at the layout. It's kind of like the like that diagonal tri triangle shape that kind of fans out as the um Hotels push out further and further, and then in between them is the entrance to the zoo, and there's, they're flanked by restaurants and, and things like that. And there could be the town hall then in the front uh, if we get that up and running. So I'm really a big fan of how it's like sort of coming together, as it were. I think it's a real touristy focused kind of plateau. And there's a few things um, now, having seen the DLC pack, that I'd love to add in. Like there's the ice rink and a few other things. It might be interesting to add some of these extra amenities in there for people. I'm just going through. Adding a few little extra ornaments here and there, just again to fill the gaps mostly, because I ultimately decided that this is going to need a big do-over anyway. Not in terms of layout, just in terms of ornaments, so we could always add in a few extra little bits and pieces as time goes on. And another thing I wanted to focus on, now there's like all these different colors, because it's going to be such a like, colorful area, I wanted to add in different colors of trees. So we've got the pink cherry blossom trees, now there's the white high life trees and then there's the you know there's obviously like the elm tree and all these different colored aut autumnal trees that are in the game anyway in terms of that zoo what i'm planning to do with it it's also just temporary right it's going to be where it is but the layout in internally is temporary but the plan with the zoo is to essentially get all the legendary animals and and things like that that aren't actually part of any sets there's a bunch that are legendary there's maybe like seven or eight that are legendary that aren't part of a set so they could just sit in there on their own they all have their own models and stuff so that'd be kind of cool to have a unique bespoke area just there while we have all our sets and stuff in in different places um, because we do have a few sets complete that actually give a 20 percent bonus to zoo modules so it kind of makes sense to me to throw as many legendary ones in there then and get the bonuses still even if they're not a bonus within themselves uh, in terms of a category anyway out here by the docks the kind of uh Sexy district the red light is not necessarily a red light district, but it's kind of like the casino district down by the docks um, where some I Don't know shady deals might be going on and things uh, I think it's kind of a cool look and that was just I readdressed the walls a little bit And then I was trying to make some little pathways that lead out it might end up changing this area a little bit it Looks nice, but I think it could look a little bit better with the trees and the lamppost There could definitely be something else there across from like the hotels and across from the things So if you got any ideas, let me know. I'll have to look through the different things to see what we could possibly add. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The beautiful, artisanal, colorful, vibrant city that attracts a lot of tourists to the Island of Swords just to come see the eclectic assortment of different houses that you can see out by the cliffs here. It really has its own distinct personality, I feel like, compared to the other artisan district that's up here, which is all much, very much uniform. Maybe we'll change that in future, of course. Now, really quickly, before we actually get into the meat and potatoes, as I usually say, of the game itself, I just want to mention that it's been over two months since I've previously played the game, and I want to say thank you so much to all the messages and support and things that I've been getting over the past few weeks. People asking where the next episode is. I've had PC troubles like you won't believe, but right now anyway, everything seems to be good. I'm confident now I can start back up the series reliably, and I, I intend to do so. Now, there's a lot to cover. In the last two months, I've missed a lot of content for Anno 1800. 
the Vibrant Cities pack came out, which I've only just started to dabble with, and then also a brand new DLC, I think, only came out just recently, and that is the Seasonal Decorations pack. So I haven't even looked at that. I actually had a lot of trouble purchasing it, because I've swapped PCs like twice, and the, my account basically thought I, it had fraudulent behavior on it, thinking I was trying to buy something from different PCs and stuff. So just managed to get it actually purchased right before recording this episode. I swear to God I have not looked at any of the ornaments. It was a total surprise. So I'm really looking forward to checking it out. Um, and I'm actually surprised that nobody posted it in my Discord or something. Because I just totally didn't see it. Anyways, as you can see, our economy is uh, suffering <laughs> quite, a, quite a bit. I don't know if that's because of whatever latest updates or fixes or whatever. We're going to go through the game, work out these logistical challenges, and really sink our teeth into the problems. I'm really very much looking forward to it. And I'm really happy with this whole area here that we've now designed as well. I think it looks awesome, but it's not finished. Of course, we're going to then start adding some of these seasonal decorations and things. It's kind of perfect that I didn't end up adding a bunch of these ornaments. When I was doing out this area, I didn't even know about that DLC. Um, so I just decided to come back to it with ornaments later. And then I was like, oh my god, there's a new pack that you can check out. So that should be really cool and really fun to mess around with. Um, and then, so yeah, I think here at the beginning what we should do is just really quickly walk around or have a bit more of a zoom in and walk around Because obviously the time lapse kind of flies around really quickly. I know the economy's tanking. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We'll get back to it Eventually <laughs> So, um, something I wanted to mention as well actually really quickly I'm, I have so many things to mention here at the beginning But something that I've noticed is that the game is running really well for me and when I was setting it up on this PC, it wasn't running that well at first. And I was like, oh, what the hell, you know? I had it running better than that before. And people have often said to me, like, oh, your game is running really well. Basically, I don't think I've ever actually shown my options, but, um... Yeah, there we are. We're in graphics already. The thing that really, like, almost doubled my frame rate was DirectX 12. So, I think... I must have been on DirectX 12 before, and then when I got my new PC, I set it back up with DX11. And the game was just not running very well at all. And then switching to DX12, and I went painstakingly through these options to check a few different things out. You have to restart almost every time. Anyway, long story short, DX12 massively helped my frame rate anyway with my current setup. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. There should be in every video, actually, of my PC specs in case you ever want to check it out and see what I'm using. I have the exact same PC I had before. It's just, it's a new PC. It's just, it's not broken, but it's the same components and everything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I saw a massive frame jump when, when doing that, even on like higher settings and things, so really happy with how the game is running right now. And I know a lot of people struggle with that, so hopefully that can, might help some people, I don't know, because people do often ask, like, how do you get it running so good, so. Uh, hopefully that helps. Alright, so the next thing then is to, I thought we'd have a little walk around. So this area here, as I'm sure I'll explain in the time lapse, is supposed to be kind of like the CD sort of... I don't know, late night strip next to the docks, down by the docks where all the gambling and debauchery goes on. So I thought it'd be kind of cool, you know, you've got the neon lights across from the docks. And I ended up changing this, it used to just be trees, so now it's like potted trees and different um, signposts and things like that. So, I don't know, I just think it has a kind of a cool vibe and a cool look to it. I might change this side up, obviously, when we have a look at these different ornaments. And maybe make it a bit more interesting. But I'm quite happy with how that looks. I can hear that train constantly going. Oh. Sometimes the train glitches where you just hear it forever, even though there is no train. I was wondering why it was so loud. But anyway, I just think that looks quite cool, you know, even just looking at it from up here. I think having it down by the docks is kind of like a cool sort of aesthetic. And then it builds up into the kind of nicer and nicer city. That then goes into the sort of central park that we have. And then, of course, we've got the the inner alleyways with the ne lit by the neon signs. It's actually really cool to walk through these areas because you'll see the glow of the neon. You have to press F, by the way, to turn off your torch, if you want to. Obviously, it's all glitchy and stuff in here graphically, because it's not meant to be looked at from this perspective, but it's just still kind of cool, seeing, like, little bits of neon lights, and you can imagine the shady deals and the all the stuff that would go on in the streets between the uh, casinos and the strip clubs, maybe, and bars and things like that. Oh, I'm totally lost now. There we are. So I thought that was a cool place to add that, and that's basically... Excuse me again, the um, Vibrant Cities at Work. So let's just really quickly, for those who may just be watching this and have never seen the DLCs, I think it's just good to go through them very fast. So we have over here our Farmer Residences. So now with the Vibrant Cities DLC pack, the Vibrant Cities basically adds four different skin variants to your regular households. It doesn't let you affect the high rises from the High Life DLC. So just clicking Change Building Skin. Sorry, it actually adds three. 
Obviously, the fourth one is the default base skin. But now you've got the brick skin, you have the colorful skin, and the inverted skin. And that's sort of a theme across all of them, although some of them do have different names, but that's kind of the gen general feeling and the gen An general theme. Comes here to catch a spot of air. So that's what? that. We'll have a look really quickly then at the worker variants that we can see. I know nobody wants to be hearing about variants these days. We'll check it out. So we've got the default, which they're on now. Then we have the brick skin, which is really similar to what it is already, because a lot of them are bricks anyway, but it's a more orange brick, but it also seems to make them a lot more rigid. For instance, a lot more uniform, if you know what I mean. You know, a lot more, yeah, uniform, more planned. Because that's the same kind of area, but it's, I don't know, walled differently in a way. And then we've got the colorful skin. So that's a much more of a one-to-one. -one. Whereas you can see the brick skin almost orders things more strictly. Right bobbish with the machines. Never know so, what bit of me's getting chewed up next. <laughs> so we have the uh, colorful skin then. And then we've got the inverted skin. And then there's a new tool, tool in the game, which I fully don't, I fully kind of don't get at the moment. I've still never really been able to use this. It says hold down alt to choose a skin from an existing building. So if I was to hold down alt, and then do I drag, is it? But they all change, so I don't really know how to use that. I'm tapping alt there, and then I'll press it here. It doesn't really seem to do it either. So I'm not really sure how that's, that's supposed to work been trying to do that but either way you can kind of paint all if you want if you hold shift you can change all on the entire island which is a bit much um so that's kind of that you know we'll we'll dabble around and mess around with it in future time lapses when we're putting things down i'll kind of decide to spread them out a bit i think um in this city it, it'll be quite what cool to have if i haven't done it already yeah change some of these because there's little bits of workers and artisans here It'd be, it would make a lot of sense then for the artisan households which have like a sort of a black skin as well this brick one, they would match the workers that are living here a lot more. So I, I love it. You know, I think it's really cool that I can kind of do this, change some of them. And now this whole area, even though they're different classes, they're now kind of colored the same. So I, I love it. I think I think it's really cool. And then you can vary it up a little bit. I haven't seen what other creators have done with it or anything, but no doubt, you know, I'm sure this has just made the game a lot more eccentric and pleasing to the eye to see and more natural, I guess, to see not just uniform blankets of... Um, you know, certain skins everywhere. So that's really nice. I really like that. So just really quickly, we'll have a look through it one more time. So we've got the default, we have brick, then we have colorful, and then we have inverted. For those who are fans of Tenet. So that's pretty cool. And then the final one is the engine. Well, there's actually two more, obviously. Engineers and then the investors. So engineers. You have the spark. Default, brick skin, really love the brick skin, generally speaking, for almost everything. Nightlife skin, which we saw down by the docks, and then the colorful skin, for the more outlandish and eccentric colors out there. Um, so, before we look at the investors, I thought it was worth mentioning, over in the... These are all engineer households, and because they're next to the scholars, scholars don't have any skins to change. So, if they did, it would be sort of like a DLC for DLC situation, so they haven't done them for the high life. And they haven't done them for Scholars, which is a little bit disappointing because certain times they do add these little benefits in if you own other DLCs. Like, for instance, if you own Tourism, there's recipes if you own things like the Arctic and Embesa, even though they're not the same DLC. So I, I like that. You know, you get more value if you own the whole thing. It's kind of nice. It's an incentive to own the whole thing. And it doesn't feel like you're missing out if you don't. It's just like, hey, my content has kind of kept up with everything else. Um, all the other DLCs and features that go along with it. But I understand, you know. It's a lot of work, or whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's actually a really cheap pack. I, I would have just paid an extra pound or dollar or whatever to get the extra stuff, but... Easier said than done, I guess. Anyway, I digress. So, we have the engineer households here. I thought it would make sense to make them the brick skin, seeing as they're across from the scholar. So, it's not quite the same, but it has a bit more of a university feel to it, I, I think, anyway. So, really happy with that. I think it looks great. And then... Like I said, down by the docks, we have the sort of... Neon signs and bars. They only light up obviously at night, but we can kind of see that. Oh, we already did see that. And then over in this area, I felt like it was really colorful. We have the different drug stores and different stores and markets and all of that. So I was like, yeah, the colorful skins here make a lot of sense. And this is sort of a touristy area with the restaurants and all of that, the variety theater and stuff. So it just seemed to me to make it a bit more campy, for lack of a better term. I don't mean in the bad sense. Or, there's no bad sense. God, I'm digging a hole. I mean, like, as in, like, the eclectic sense. Just the... Um, yeah, of variety kind of sense. So really can't be that way. And then we have this area out here, which again is just a 
personification of that. It's just like lots of color, big splashes. And I thought it made sense then to have that for the kind of tourists that would be here. It's like, yeah, this would be a, this would just be an attraction in and of itself, I feel. So I think that's kind of cool. So basically, broad strokes, I'm loving it. I think it's really awesome. And the fact that we have the different colors on the restaurants and stuff, it just seems to all make sense. Um, so I love it. I think it, it works really well together. But I'm eager to see what people think as well. I, have, I haven't read any feedback. I really don't pay attention to marketing or other communities or anything just because I'm, I'm busy with lots of stuff myself. And I just try to devote all my time into everything to do with my channel and my own Discord and stuff. So I've, I've got, I'm in a bit of a bubble. So I'd like to know um, basically what other people think of all these different skins. Not just of my city, but just in general of the DLC. Um, so the last thing then will be to look at the investors. And I don't think I've changed these skins anywhere. So I'm not sure... Not sure what I'm going to do with that, but we have, again, the brick skin, which actually looks really nice, but it's kind of confusing because they have the blue tops of the engineers in a way, uh, when it's kind of more supposed to be a bit more black. Then we've got the nightlife skin, which actually looks awesome when it's at nighttime. We'll, I'll show that in a second, and then we have the colorful skin as well. Um, so let's go with... Let's make it a, a nightlife one. So there we go, that's nightlife, and then we'll switch it to nighttime. And then it kind of... needs work. Lights up and looks really awesome with some of the ambient neon lights and stuff. So again, just a big fan of that kind of It's it's pretty much the same as the engineer one, but just even taller buildings and a bit more intricately detailed and stuff So it's great. I really like it. I really like that pack So I know that people are probably looking at these numbers and going like oh my god everything's tanking. We'll get to it <laughs> Don't worry about it um, So let's just paint them back the way they were Is that it? I think that's it Yeah, yeah all right, so uh, I want to take the time to look at this DLC then. I haven't, I genuinely swear I have not seen it. So let's just plant them down somewhere out here, have a look at some of these ornaments, and then we'll try to fix our economy. <laughs> um, okay, so seasonal decoration ornaments. So I think it said something in the blurb in the paragraph about this that it's like an ornament for every season. So it doesn't seem like there's that many for the four different seasons, but let's check it out either way. So we have another kind of gate archway thing that we've seen before. Let's just, I like to do this as well. It kind of gives you um, kind of a nice way to kind of see it against the white tiling, which will most no doubt usually be placed on or next to. Then let's see. Yeah, so let's just do that actually on a bigger patch. It's a shame you can't just place it on top. So we've got a one slot. It's going to be like a four slot. Let's do something like that. Then we have balloon stand. So yeah, let's just carve out a few separate one slots. And then I'll just make gaps whenever we need something bigger. So like we just said, we have the kind of floral archway, floral gate. Looks nice. Yeah, I like it. Looks good. A little different. Uh, we have a floral arch. Hmm. I wonder, does it link? It doesn't look like it links, but it might link to the... Uh, let's just find some of the regular pathway here if we can. There. No, that's a bit annoying. I can see what they're doing, but yeah, I don't know. I, when you have that base in it, I mean, it's fine. It's just meant to be on its own, I guess. I don't know if I'd ever use this. I'm trying to think of like, where would you put it? I guess in a b kind of a garden or a park or something maybe, but then you can't change out its base. Some of these ones it says you can, but not that one. Not really too sure about where I'd use that one. Then we have this one. What's this called? This is a flower sculpture. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, I got no issues with that. It's a bit, if I'm being completely honest, a little bit generic, you know? I don't, I don't know if it's like, this is like this, I need to have this in my game. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I don't know what the theme really would be for that. But again, I guess spring, gardens, making gardens look a little bit nicer and things, I guess. We've got a balloon stand. There's already balloon stands in the game, but I guess this is a bit more of a modern one. Has its own little platform, I guess, and it's on wheels and it can be wheeled around, I guess. There is a, not a balloon stand in the game, but the guy holding balloons is already a ornament on his own. A flower shop. That's kind of neat. I know that there's flower stalls already in the city lights pack, right? So you could have your florists and all of that and kind of combine these up together, I suppose, if you want to make a little kind of gardeny area. Or a market garden. Yeah, it looks good. It's always really nice to see how they interact with them and everything. They're not just standing there. They're actually dealing with it. It's cool. Uh, let's see. So that's the first tier. Then we have the garden pavilion. This looks nice. Uh, 
Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot more. That seems like it would really fit in well with like a botanical garden or a zoo or whatever, just like to break things up. Looks really good. Uh, what else do we have? A small wine stand. Ooh, now we're talking. <laughs> I like me. I like lots of little shops and things like that. Things that we can place in and around the artisans. Let's uh, just hop down on the ground really quickly and see what it says. Got the uh, airship there. Oak cask red wine. Is it white wine on this side? Oh, it's red wine either side. Not a big wine drinker myself. My parents are. Uh, they drink like a. <laughs> it's no way of saying it without making it sound bad. But I was gonna say they drink a lot of wine. I mean they do, but. Oh, a large version. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's awesome, actually. Yes. See, I like that. That's way different than any other stand in the game. With the little bar thing at the back. Yeah, I love it. That looks really cool. Really like that. Wine and cheese, it says. Uh, we've got a wine festival table. All right. I can see how this pack sort of gels together. It's not at all what I thought it was going to be. When it said seasonal decorations, I thought it was going to be like things for winter and things for summer and I guess flowers and stuff is kind of summery and a big wine barrel and this can uh, so these ones can go that's really interesting these big ones can actually go on grass or not hmm. and can you change the color of the grass you can then yeah yeah that's cool I like that I, that's the way every ornament should be <laughs> do that for everything what's the big deal <laughs> I don't know it's probably complicated but like oh man yeah the fact that they're doing that it's like yeah that's exactly what I want for everything. And not just that base. I would love it if you could change the base from, you know, the road texture as well. So some stuff could go on the um, concrete path. Uh, the paving. Yeah, white tiles, grass, or paving. Perfect. Um, good to see, though. It's a step in the right direction. Next one is the maypole. A maypole? I've never heard of that before. So just go control V. Put it back on the white. So people playing little instruments. Don't hear any music coming from it, though. And a maple. Yeah, I actually don't even know what that is. Don't know. It's kind of nice, though. Is it a European thing? German thing? For festivals or something? Looks good. I like it. It's different. Anything that's big and different, love it. <laughs> um, right, let's see what's next. Another archway. And this one's for an entrance. And it's not the same as the other one, but pretty close. It's got la lamps uh, in the middle and things. Cool. Next one is then the pumpkin carts. Let's just place these ones down. Pumpkin barrels. And a bonfire. Ooh. like the look of that. So that one, the bonfire. Interestingly. Wait a second. Hang on a sec. No. Okay, yeah. Never mind. I thought that could go with grass as well. It can't. So this doesn't have a white paving. This is just grass. Same with that one. Although there's different variants of it, actually. That's kind of neat. So the pumpkin cart has two different variants. Something I should have checked, actually. That's got two... Yeah, yeah. All right, neat. I'll try to move this out of the way. It's kind of blocking things, so we want to zoom in. Yeah, it looks good. I like the pumpkin cart quite a lot. What is this again? Just pumpkin barrels. Mm -hmm. And then the bonfire. Bonfire is awesome. You can hear the crackling of the fire and everything. Gotta get that sound design in there. That could be really cool, actually, the way you can blend with grass and put it out somewhere. Uh, let's see. In a more kind of farmer districty area. Maybe we could have a bonfire somewhere over here, you know? Um, pumpkin competition. Alright, so it's like, yeah, like a little pumpkin festival. Seasonal festival. A cider stall. I'm, now we're talking. I'm a big fan of cider. Pumpkin cider as well, it looks like. Because there's pumpkins there. Looks good. Let's brighten the day up a bit more. We have another read of what's going on. Hot apple cider. Hot and strong grog. Baked apples. Oh no, it is apple cider. It just happens to be pumpkins here. Yeah, it looks awesome. Different colored trees and everything with it. Um, so, let's see then. That's the cider, st cider stall. Then we have the autumnal gate. So, what do we have? A floral gate, a wine festival gate, and an autumnal gate. 
and then a winter gate. Yeah, it looks quite nice. Again, that makes sense. And then the floral gate, I guess, is almost like spring. No summer gate, I guess? Maybe I guess the wine festival is during the summer. Yeah, I guess so. An ice rink. Oh my god. Oh wow. This is huge. Now that's cool. That's worth it. Makes it a lot more worth it. Something nice and big like that. What we could do, maybe maybe as we get to winter, if I want to go crazy, we could maybe change uh, an area out here and add an ice rink into our amusement park to represent winter. Or we could have a reserved space for it, maybe. If I was getting real fancy schmancy, I think what, what I'd think of doing is, if you had, like, um... What's it called? Some of the polar... This city is a magnet um, for genius. Why can't I think of the word modules? Polar modules for the zoo. You know, polar animals, polar modules. They often come with like ice and things like this. You can see like the ice and everything. And then you can have the ice rink in the center. So you could design a whole little zoo that focuses on the polar um, kind of aspects of the game in the Arctic and have that in there. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, so next one over then, the chestnut stall. Oh, that looks really nice. Love it. Man, it makes me want to have roasted chestnuts right now. Yeah, really cool. Love it. Uh, what else do we have then? The Christmas py Pyramid. Oh, wow. It's animated as well. And we've got a Christmas archway. A snow globe. And the winter gate, which we looked at as well. Let's just... Whoops. One button. There we go. Yeah, snow globe's pretty cool as well. These would be nice. I'm trying to think of um, which ones we could place around that eclectic, colorful, artisanal area. Some of these definitely could go around there, and I'll see what different bases we have. Would love to put this one out there. Definitely think I'll be able to. Cheese and wine has to go out there for sure. So there you go, guys. That's, that's the DLC pack. Didn't really look at that thing, actually. The Christmas Pyramid. A woodworking marvel. It's carved figures smiling benevolently at the crowds below. It's a little creepy. I don't like things to slowly spin. <laughs> but yeah, nice nonetheless. Nice nonetheless. Bit of a weird pack though, if I'll be honest. It, you know, it doesn't really feel like it actually has a theme. I, I get what they're kind of going for. I like certain things though. So, you know, it's all good. No big criticism for me of that one. I wonder if I was coming up with a pack. I never really thought about it, but like, what would I want in the game that's not there now? More stalls and, and shops and supermarkets would be nice. If it, the thing that only thing that ever really disappointed me in this game was when the DLC came out adding these different supermarkets and they all just look kind of the same. Um, I, yeah, I kind of just wish they were a bit different. But oh well. Um, anyways, so let's play the game. I know it took quite a long time there, but like I said, for me it's been over two months since playing the game. So a lot of time has passed. Um, so we've got problems, right? Engineers and tourists. So the only, the main difference, gameplay-wise, from the city's layout's perspective, is that I've added an extra hotel to the island, and I think that's causing some disruptions, obviously. Extra demand and things like that. I haven't added any more houses or anything. Um, not that I can think of. So there's definitely room for more engineers. We've got all this room out here for more stuff as well. Uh, and I'd like to finish off and build up the city more. We want to have like the museum and the zoo like an, in an actual proper area. They're just kind of planted down there just to keep the attractiveness sort of higher right now. So it's kind of situation um, in terms of, are we, we press that, there we go. We can actually see things now. So the workforce has been just completely destroyed. So let's just reduce that way back down. So the population will fall, but at least the customers and workers and everything are gonna get back to their restaurants, right? So the less workers that goes into this, the more that we're going to get back because they're going to start actually this making things again and no the whole menus. economy sort of we'll comes back up together. Everything. So it's coming back up right now anyway. If you have a look at the hotels. Places, but here I feel so at home. Yeah, so the problem was that they were running out, like no one was working the restaurants, the cafes or the bars. So with those three needs fulfill, uh, kind of gone, the whole thing just started collapsing. So that's just going to build itself back up slowly. And as it builds, then we can just raise this up. Somewhere like that, you know, and the population comes out. So again, for those who don't remember, this radius, as it expands, adds a 10% to the population of all the buildings it covers. So it should expand all the way to here, roughly speaking. All right, cool. 
Uh, the goal for me is really just to have about 100,000 population and have a nice looking city. That's really kind of it. Um, so that's all I'll be working towards. Now, engineer-wise, what's your problem? Solution. Coffee. That's going to be a hell of a problem to tackle as well. We've got ruins in different places. Let's do that. And then Arthur bought, bought a share. But we already bought it back, so that's fine. Okay, cool. All right, let's get into it. So it's going to be a lot to figure out and kind of re-accustom myself to certain things here. Now, we're lacking engineers Just big time. To so to bring to the engineers back up... I'm actually researching a bunch of like legendary animals and items that actually aren't part of sets. So some of the items that I don't have or characters or, you know, whatever that I don't have that I want to put in the zoo. I'm getting ahead of myself. So this, this zoo here, I want to have like really legendary animals in it, just like the best of the best. But they're not going to be part of sets. They're just the one offs. And there's lots of them that aren't part of a bigger set. So they can all go in that zoo. So I decided to get the ones I don't have in the research institute. But obviously, the workforce is a little high, so maybe we don't have that 10,000 to spare right now. So we'll just make sure that everyone's working. At least doing the job, keeping the economy rolling. And uh, hopefully that'll be okay. Alrighty, so we're up to 91,200 as that kind of comes back up. You've got the credentials. Why think of heaven? So coffee, I guess we can have a look at that and see can we fix this. It might be a kind of a big problem early on to fix. So we'll just go all islands first and have a look. So we're three tons short. For producing coffee right now three tons short something else i just want to check really quickly this is reducing consumption of coffee by 10 percent and it is active so that's good okay and the toasters even and these are just going to be items they won't remove anything that's like a food oh actually cigars was reduced the there with that. Afloat, so the mind may create. that's fair enough the only other thing that might be worth pointing out gameplay-wise is that I've moved some of these shopping districts around. So there's two here now. They used to just be placed over here temporarily. These two are actually in a great position, in my opinion, anyway, because they're treating both scholars and engineers. And this thing is for spectacles and tailored suits, so it's perfect. It's literally scholars and engineers. So they're, they happen to be placed in a, in a perfect spot now. You know, pocket watches and telephones. They're covering pretty much everything they need to. So I'm really happy with the placement of that. It just kind of worked out. I don't know. I just had it over here helping the scholars, and I was like, well, this this is perfect. Um, so I'll just popped it there. What else could we do? So yeah, so coffee. I don't know if there's anything else that reduces coffee significantly. What about this? This reduces coffee by 10% as well. So let's just whack that circle way back up. And let's just keep it to 3600 for now. And that way we can check... For now. <laughs> and that way we can check the all islands... Coffee consumption now. Now we're only short by one ton. So much better, right? Now, ideally, we should be able to get squeeze a couple more tons out and see if we can handle that. But that's that just shows you how finely balanced things are at this, at this point in time. So a lot of our coffee production, if I recall correctly, is done over in Cape Trelawney. Look busy, people. That's rum. God, I can't even remember what these buildings look like, guys. I'm, I'm losing it. Losing it completely. The advanced coffee roasters. There we go. I really do wish they added a music player. I hate when that song plays. It's a great song, but playing all the time makes me want to blow my brains out. I have to, like, at the beginning of an episode, I think I've said this before, I have to switch back and forth between regions to sort of cancel them and just get a different song to play. <laughs> um, anyways... So yeah, advanced coffee roasters. Do we have another one available? We do, but it wouldn't be within the trade union. Potentially. Unless we decided to move something else, such as glass production, which seems like that should take a backseat to coffee, right? Coffee is such a major thing that you need. So what do we have in here for the coffee roaster? Or sorry, for, yeah. So productivity of the coffee roasters, 50%, extra goods, coffee beans, fur dealer. Okay. Hmm. Is there any other item that affects the coffee roaster? Specifically. Well, of course, we have ferrous always affecting things. Let's turn on unknown. Lots of things, actually. Workforce reduced. Uh, really, productivity is what I want to check. Productivity, 35% on the forkinator. We could throw one of them in there. We could just throw Ferris in there, and then we blast productivity, right? 
That's always it seems to be the way to go. We have Marco in the in the spot already. All drink production productivity 50%. See, something like that is just a bit more fun to try and use instead of just throwing Ferris into the same thing all the time. So productivity 50%. We can get one in the... Uh, do we have one lying in storage, perhaps, per chance? Um, in the large trading post here. Oh, there's one on the island right now. So let's just try that. So maybe we'll say... Good night to the mechanized glass blower. Hmm. I'm just trying to work out, should we get rid of the fur dealers or should we get rid of the glass production? It's got to be one or the other. There is a lot of glass production that's been affected, whereas fur is just one thing. And I'm sure we could place her elsewhere. Instead of cotton fabric, the building process is wool. Alright, let's say goodnight. We'll turn off those buildings. We'll put them somewhere else. I, if I recall correctly, we've got fur production on a different island as well. So if we can consolidate that down, maybe that'd be a better thing to do. So it requires a major discovery, but we might be at our limit, actually, aren't we? Oh yeah, I think we are. So we can only even get one more. Hmm. I think so. Oh no, we can get one more. Gladdens 90, me to be reminded of your positivity. It's the 100,000 we can't get unless we get more scholars. Yeah, so I mean, we can get one more building, which is nice. So two more buildings in total is going to be what we're increasing production. Let's just um bump that one up to be next. Good. Man, I love Vano. <laughs> it's been so long since I've like looked around and played the game and soaked myself up with the atmosphere of the world and everything. So yeah, we could definitely get another one. So in that case, what we could maybe do is... Well, I won't do it right now, but we'll squeeze them along, change things a bit. But yeah, for now, that's fine. Do we have the required malt, I guess, is the next question. So the intermediate product of malt. Uh, the production and demand, so it's a bit short. We're a little bit short on malt. And all the malt produce is made over here. Is it even being affected? It's actually not. So this is all just wasted territory. This is going to be champagne cellars, rum distilleries, and advanced rums. These are all advanced rum. That's advanced rum. And this is it. So they're all built for rum. This is just thrown in there because we had the space. So that's fine. I don't need to remove them. We could just add more. Oh, there's even more up here. Holy crap. That seems like... <laughs> seems a bit excessive. If only there were more and there's more glass production up there. How interesting is this? Very. <laughs> to me, anyway. Okay. Did that lady reduce the... workforce as well, was it? Oh, yeah. Instead of the usual workforce, it employs workers. That's why we've got so many workers now. So just halt these buildings then, please. That fixes everything for now. Don't you just love it? The problem after problem? I love it. Just want to get the right amount of buildings down, and then we can work on layouts and optimization, I guess. Okay, so that adds a bit more. This looks like that's probably going to have to go. We can replace this with something else later on. And that's going to be in effect as well. Okay. So does coffee get traded from here? Coffee from the old world. Lusk to swords. That's fine. Multi-regional. The specialty trade route of coffee. Picks it up from Porto Venus. Deposits in Marbella. Then to Lusk. Our deposit island in the old world. Then it picks it up from Crown Far Farms. Then deposits it in Lusk. Okay. How much is sitting in... Yeah, okay. There's going to be even more sitting there. Maybe it needs another ship. There's that my favorite song again. Alright, that clears the music at least for now. Oh my god, come on, what is with that? They should definitely like have something in there. Where if the song just played, it can't play again. You know? For like until another song plays. <laughs> Oh, 
this music is so nice. It makes you want to just sit here for a while. At Standelsbreen, which is actually named by one of our viewers a long time ago. I was watching a little bit of the last episode to see, like, what was I doing? And I did skim through it, but I was doing something here, and I, I don't remember. So everything seems to be holding up in the Arctic, at least. All right, cool. We're back. Uh, okay, so that seems to fix some things, right? At the expense of this problem. What it is so I fur. Do. Cotton fabric and fur is, but it could take wool directly instead. And we don't have the workforce to su su support that. Because it's artisans. But with the fur dealer, we do. So in Lusk, in our factory island, I'm assuming we have fur being made here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and they have the fur dealer around them as well. Yeah, I think ultimately we just need to centralize it somewhere, you know? And give it its own trade union. Just seems like we need so much. Or you could import it, I guess, through Docklands. So consumer goods... Yeah, oh my god. Alright, well I'm going to attempt to put it all on one island then. So you're for fur. You're for Taylor's shop. That's not the same building, right? And then Taylor's shop. So two of them are for Taylor's shop. Sorry, what's even a Taylor's shop? This thing? Okay. So they're affecting that, and the fur dealer is affecting just the fur. But what's getting these benefits then? Oh, just the trade union, the department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is nothing short of a major okay. discovery. Let's try to place another trade union somewhere out here and build it for fur, and see how that kind of works out. Again, it's the type of thing where I'll probably end up, you know, maybe moving some things or optimizing just a little bit more in the future. We have the influence to do that, so I don't mind building one or two more. Now, what's the workforce like? It's going to be 200 workers. That's okay. I'm only going to need, like, I don't know, three or four of them. Just two that comes from there, and then I'll just try to move these ones myself. And that needs to be connected with a road to get the benefit. Yeah, good. At least it has the benefits. That's good. Surprisingly, actually, this doesn't have the benefit. That seems like a silly mistake. There we go. Do these get the extra? They do. Wow, I just increased productivity 16%. Just by adding a road. I don't know how I made that mistake before. Just forgot about it, I guess. So now that they have that purple color around, that means that they're attached to the trade union, so or the um, local department, so they're getting that extra benefit. All right, good. We're uh, making progress. Let's say for dealer, who's still stuck in that building. So in she goes. And then we're just gonna move these. I really like the layout I had over there, but ultimately, you know, the factory has to, must grow. Alrighty. So, something like that. And uh, as nice as this little compartment, car compartmentalized area is, just have to say goodnight. They're all affected, that's good. God, we're really just getting into a massive grid form now, aren't we? I think that's all we need, really. So, just to make it a little bit nicer looking, just move these over just a smidge. Uh, even though it's weird, but it is a factory, it should they should all face the same way. Good. Alrighty, so we got to open up these things to roads. Let's just get rid of that. Let's 
I'll just drag that down for now. So there we go. So this is like a little area. All the fur dealers are here. They have their roads out, ideally. Yeah. It makes sense. I'll just close it off again. Right, so they need a proper warehouse connection now, which we don't really have. So there's a warehouse up there. And there's warehouses here. Probably needs just its own internal ones, right? So, Although I don't really like putting them inside of the area of trade unions. But if we just optimize this place just for fur and just double down on that, it's I guess it's fine. Some of these other places are getting benefits. These can move some of these smaller industries as well, potentially. Yeah, so again, this will be a little temporary until we decide if this what else this trade union is going to do. I'm just going to add some of these basic um, warehouses here. Okay. So that's eight. Eight in total. Currently receiving a... Substitute to the workforce. Replaced input of cotton fabric. Okay. And then we're going to hop back to the Cape Trelawney and say, like, look, we don't need these then anymore. Well, I'll just leave them paused, just so you never know. But, um... That at least gets rid of that. And with the extra workforce we have, we can now build more workers in the old world and supply them with whatever they need by using these workers, if that makes sense. Uh, and farmers. We'll have to wait until we get our next uh, milestone for that one. And that's going to take... 150 engineers. Yeah, we've got them, so that's fine. So let's just check coffee then, now that things have changed a bit. Coffee now is slightly over what it needs to be, so as long as trade is working, that's fine. Let's go back to the old world. We're lacking 256 workers. So on our beautiful small island here of Rush, we'll just keep adding more here. So we're going to use them eventually into the estates. <laughs> very lazily, but I'll, I'll move them around in future. Money matters dominate middle age. Refed at least. We're obviously just going to be farmers for a while, and then we'll advance them when we can. So how many is that? Um... Yeah, that should be enough. That's 400 workers right there, I think, if I counted that right. All right, hopefully hopefully that makes sense to everyone. So I get a little bit bogged down with that, but I think everything's okay. I regret to We've got shortages you. on lots of things, so for the next few episodes, I've got lots to work with and figure out um, as we look around at what we can possibly add. Um... Okay, so with that in motion, I'm just kind of letting time go by, I guess, while we're waiting for certain things to catch up. Just trying to think then. Let's just keep an eye on fur then. I need to work everything out and then see what the deal is. Yeah, okay, I remember now. So, fur. Raw fur. Whoops. Oh, they still have that bug in the game. Um, fur. Fur in Cape goes from this island into here. And I think it's only needed. Oh God, I can barely remember. I think it's only needed for fur coats, right? I don't think it's used for anything else. At least not here. So we drop all the fur into Crown Farms. We pick up schnapps. We pick up beer. And we bring that to Lusk. But ideally what we need to do now is actually have a bit of everything. And we're actually picking up fur. So all the fur was being picked up from Lusk. And being dropped to Crown Farms. That's weird. Huh. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. Drumcondra is this little island here. Picking up all the fur. Yeah, so ultimately... These ships are full. I'm just going to pause them as well. Because I'm going to have to change what they do. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that and that. Right. Load the raw material of fur, please. Is it agricultural product? There we go. Alright. Sorry, that's the last thing there. So yeah. 
So that should that should fix everything. Well, not fix everything, but that helps this route a little bit. Again, I might have to have a look over some of these things and re-specialize them a bit more. Let's just accept that, though. And then we'll have to click and go to these ships and um, I... just drop this stuff off and then reset it. Let's see if the other one's in this area right now. On trade routes. Yes, it is. Alright, nice. So just drop all that stuff in there. That's what it was going to do anyway. But yeah, there's, there's so much cause and effect to this. I'm like making decisions, not really fully remembering and understanding like what was the entire, you know, backlog of that production chain? Finishing touches Where did they get their wool from? Where yeah. did they get all their fur from? I know fur comes from here massively. That's resin yeah. and that's fur. So a lot of fur does come out of here. So in the old world route, straight up from this island down to this one. This is our, just for those who don't remember, it's been a while. This is our big factory island, our big deposit. Everything should flow into here and then flow back out, basically. It's kind of a deposit box in a way. So a huge amount of fur, ideally, yeah, just gets shipped straight into there. And they've got loads, actually. And then that, along with wool, is going to get turned into coats. So I suppose what I need to look at then is all islands... The agricultural product of fur. Dude, we are massively overproducing it. You know, we probably don't even need to take it from that small island at all, looking at this. It's not even being worked on. Yeah, so we've got loads of fur. See, this is the kind of thing where I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that was, it's overkill. Total overkill, changing those routes. But what about um, wool, then? And same with wool. Looks like it's crazy. <laughs> so, I don't know. It seems like we're fine, then. It's just mostly the workforce needed to actually work the buildings. They're starting to level up now, so I'll just wait a little bit. Okay, well, that's great news. So the, the bottom tier, the raw material, is totally fine. It was just a shortage in this stuff itself. Island storage full. What is going on? <laughs> Fur coats? But... Well, it's massively short. So do we pull any in through Docklands? Or has it just been accumulating here for a long time? Seems so. Oh my god, there's so much to do, so much to change, so much to think about. So this is the entire world's fur production now. And according to the statistics, is it just, let me just even test it. Turn that off, all of those are off now. All islands, agriculture, so consumer, sorry, consumer goods. Okay, so that is everything, that's everything, that's where all the, the fur comes from. I was just making sure that we weren't doing it somewhere else, or fur coats. So that's back on. Although, allegedly, that is still not enough. Yeah, apparently not even not even close. This is what I want to see. Are we pulling some in? How have we been sustaining it at all? It doesn't seem like it makes any sense. I don't see any. Okay, so, in that case, then, don't we need, like, way more of these? massive workforce requirements on that but that brings us closer and then with some extra items this place should be fine so who else we have productivity let's just add productivity productivity of all carpentry okay let's not do that then let's say these are called for a dealer yeah All right, productivity 40% for all cloth industries and workforce needed reduced, yes. All production building, that's just chance of fire. All right, we could throw Ferris in there then as well, I guess. Boom. And that should increase productivity so much so that we now have way more than we'll ever need. 67 over 43. So that means, see you later. And that's 56 to 43. Pause. 49 to 43. Perfect. Right? Just a little bit extra. So there you go. It's all spec'd for one thing, though. I suppose you really want to have as many buildings as you can, because then you could just sell it and get something else in return. So maybe we'll do that in the future. But at least now, we've got a positive workforce, even, by adding in those items. Like I said, we could maybe swap out first. 
which would hurt the productivity quite a bit, but maybe swap something else in that helps some other industry. You know, we could hybridize it to an extent. Just like over here, something else needs to go back in and some space can be you know, allocated to something else. So I'll, I'll, work it on. I'll work on it. We'll work on it over the next few episodes. Um, right, so in, in that case, do we even need these houses then? We actually kind of don't. So let's just say see you later. <laughs> All right, so they're gone. They're gone. So all of this is a cause and effect for coffee, right? We, the old goal was, like, we don't want to run out of coffee. But I think we're, we're looking at a trade route overhaul Fresh at some point here, because there's so much stuff going on. Another issue I'm definitely keenly aware of is that grapes, we're just not making enough grapes globally. And we actually rely on grapes in our Docklands to trade champagne to pull in stuff like bread and other things. So we apparently so we're just able to make just and enough. So many lives. I'll have to look into that again. It seems like a trade problem more than anything. But I might have to leave it there for this episode. We've kind of gone I long, so um, do my trout. everything Thank seems to be st like kind of stabilizing a bit, right? We're back up to ninety-five thousand. No massive shortages How right now. I could check, um, maybe change some of these out for things like that. I'm curious about. Bread is on the increase. Soap is basically gone, so that's a problem. We have to figure that one out. A lot of the higher tier items, like that, you need for high life, is totally fine. We've got loads of them, so they're fine. How's this building There's doing? No 4,005. Absolutely loving it. The skyline tower is complete. Yeah, just a few little ingredients here and there, and then I'm sure we'll be able to just stabilize it. We'll probably then add some more houses, get some more influence, and just keep building up a bit so that we can then get more trade unions and squeeze our production lines even further. So back, last thing I think then to look at is in Crown Farms. We can't get that just yet. We don't have the um, milestone yet. But something could be added here for the coffee roaster. All drinks production productivity 50%, yeah? Boom. So that extra 50% is going to make coffee totally secure for, for quite a while. But then we have to look at the raw ingredients below it. So 65 to 60... It's actually not nearly as much as I thought, really. 50% productivity. I just added 50% and it doesn't seem to uh, help that much, to be honest. Well, we're over the coffee limit anyway, which is good. But that's going to hurt malt, right? Malt's going to be, like, super thirsty now. Uh, it's just a little bit short. And then to make malt, you need grain. You know, we have to look at how much grain is on the island. <laughs> Because it never ends. Grain we're not producing enough of, even with all of this. But I think we pull in some through Docklands. Yeah. Alright, so I'll have to call it there. I'll do a little bit of research between the next this episode and the next one to see, like, what's our attack plan? What can I focus on in terms of, uh, from the bottom up, chain-wise? You know, to see what we can add and get working again. Because it's just a, a few little... Cracks are appearing all over our industries, and I'm like desperately sort of like plugging the holes as, as each each hug each plug I did I say? yeah each pl each hole I plug another one kind of opens up you know it's like uh, I'm at the bottom of a ship that's sinking so I need to I need to figure out a way to actually get to the bottom of it so to speak and see what we can do to help it out. Hey, my outro music is just playing organically in the game. I guess that's gonna be it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.